Dude, your gear's getting fat. <laughs> no, I'm cultivating mass. Hey guys, welcome to Gear Tasting. Today I wanted to walk through a couple of different things that I've been wanting to talk about for a while. And I kind of put them together and what I wanted to talk about is mass gray as well as kind of painting some rifles which kind of goes hand in hand with talking about mass gray because I'm going to get into some color matching stuff. So what is mass gray? First of all, because some of you guys might not understand what that is or what it means. So when the Navy had developed uh, for the for the SEAL teams a suit called the mass suit, which stands for maritime assault suit. This, so this was something developed as a splash suit. It's not necessarily a dry suit per se, so it doesn't have a valve that you can connect um, to an actual air tank like a scuba rig, which you would do in a normal full-on dry suit. This does have gaskets around the neck and the hands and has booties on the bottom for feet. So you can be completely sealed off, so to speak, from the water in one of these suits. And, but there's no, there's no inflation that's possible with a, with a scuba rig, so in a traditional dry suit. So if you know anything about that, kind of get what I'm saying. You might not understand dry suits, but in lieu of just kind of trying to save some time and moving on, this is, this is the mass suit. So this was developed by a company called Kokatat um, that makes um, a lot of paddling accessories, so they do a lot with kayaks and uh, things like that. So they don't sell this commercially. This was something, this was an eBay type thing that I picked up because I was very interested in history because I knew about that being in the Navy, um, about the history of the mass suit and things like that. So that being said, this was called the Maritime Assault Suit. That's where mass gray comes from because Kogatad developed this colorway for the Navy. They wanted something that would blend in with water operations, especially at night and that's where the mass gray colorway came from. And then LBT uh, got contracted by the Navy to start producing things in that mass gray colorway. And this color here, which this is an LBT pack, this is the nylon colorway that they came up with to match mass gray, which is a pretty damn close match in my opinion. And I think the colorway is very interesting. That's why I kind of have sourced some stuff in mass gray. I bought some stuff from LBT when they had a big sale on mass gray stuff, which I don't think they really carry much anymore, but you can still find it uh, through eBay and things like that. But it was commercially available on LBT's website, the mass gray stuff in this. Um, and then the other thing that came along, and this was something I just picked up on eBay as well, is so this is a company called Blue Water. Blue Water Defense came out with a uniform that was done with this mass gray colorway too. And this was something that wasn't commercially available. Like I said, eBay is kind of a good resource for things like that. And I'm just kind of a, a student of history too. I like kind of researching that type of stuff and acquiring things to, uh, that, that obviously go with other colorways and schemes just to kind of learn about the history of that too. So I've really kind of studied that and kind of made myself aware of where things come from too. Um, the mass suit was something that was in use when I was at Bud's and obviously I didn't make it through and become a SEAL but I had learned a lot about that while I was there, so it was kind of on my radar, so to speak. That's how I even really found out about Kokatat and the mass suit and things like that. So that being said, mass gray kind of came from that. LBT matched it, and there aren't a lot of companies producing stuff in mass gray because that was a custom LBT run, so to speak. So they, they were the ones that came up with the color matching on nylon, and if you know anything about producing nylon goods, if you make a custom colorway on nylon material, you have to buy a lot of yardage um, in terms of that. So it's not very cost effective for someone to just go out there and be like, oh, I'd like some of that nylon too, and I'll make some stuff in it. So um, there's, no, there's no restriction, so to speak, on you being able to produce your own color match stuff, but nobody's doing it because of the expense involved in with it. So completely understandable. So what I tried to do is, obviously sourced some stuff from LBT that was already in that camo pattern, or I say camo, but in that colorway. Uh, but there were obviously some things that I couldn't find that matched that. So what I did is I went down to the hardware store and took some mass gray stuff with me and started color matching caps on spray paint until I found, a, found something that was a very close match. So 
This Rust-Oleum color, which is anodized bronze, it's a 7754 anodized bronze, is a super close match, in my opinion, to mass gray. And if you kind of look at this holster that I painted, um, you can see that, see that too. It's a, it's a fairly close match. I painted uh, my helmet a while back, and I remember getting some questions on, you know, where I got a mass gray helmet, and it's just, it's rattle canned is really all it is. So, well, I took a, as you can see from the inside, I took a tan ops core bump helmet that still has, you know, tan straps on it, and I just painted it. And then what I did is bought replacement Velcro from ops core that was in the foliage color, which I felt was the closest match to it. But this is ops core counterweight on the back, and I actually spray painted the tan version of that as well on the nylon, and it actually came out pretty good, and the Velcro is still sticky, so... Another thing I might do is actually go back and paint the, the Velcro to even match even more. Um, and I need to match this mount too. I, I don't like the old Rhino mounts. I've, I've uh, found out about Wilcox mounts and how superior they are to standard mounts for night vision, so that's another story. But I also, around the same time, sourced a Velcro kit from Cry for their uh, airframe helmet just to, to put on to this, and I thought that was actually an even closer match, but I just wound up going with the Opscore stuff. But like I said, it is paintable. But what I want to do is just kind of show that I, that I, what I wanted to do is transition or come up with hardware that could be swapped out on the gun to kind of change uh, not only camo patterns, but colorways. So this is the gun we built a long time ago on ITS uh, with our DIY Air 15 build. And I had a bunch of hardware dipped in what they called Marpat, which is a fairly close match to Desert Digital or AOR1 or whatever you want to call it. Grand, those are different, sorry. The, uh, the thing though is that I wanted to leave a black gun so I'd be able to do that. And I'm a big fan of just painting your gun and not giving a shit about it. I like to just rattle can stuff all the time and in my opinion, there's nothing wrong with rattle canning, canning a gun. I just wanted to leave a, a base of black so that I could swap out hardware. And I'm finally getting around to doing that. That was my intention to begin with whenever we did this build back in the day. But now I'm obviously painting stuff with this mass gray color because I'd like to be able to swap that out too. Um, personally, my three favorite colorways um, are mass gray. And I'll kind of talk through why I do have favorite colorways. So Multicam, Desert Digital, or AOR1 whatever you can get a hold of, I do feel like AOR1 is a better match for, um, I guess, desert type, arid type environments. Not arid. Um, I believe arid is dry climate, right? Anyway, so yeah, arid environments. And I feel like multicam is a great match for, I don't want to really say jungle environments, but, you know, dense vegetation, uh, green vegetation, that's kind of where multicam comes into play. So I feel like with Desert Digital Multicam and this mass gray color, you kind of have all your bases covered. I don't think black is a great match when you're outside at night. Um, I have seen mass gray just perform phenomenally at night, even in uh, vegetation under, under nods. So we were running the muster last year, and I wore a bunch of mass gray stuff because I'd just kind of been getting into it. Um, and I was able to observe under nods what some different environments look like under night vision, the mass gray really blended in well and multicam did not, honestly, at night. So, um, like I said, that's just my opinion. That's what I found. So, I really got into mass gray heavily after I kind of came to that realization that, hey, this is actually a really great colorway at night. Um, that's kind of how I came to that. And I think that, like, the the gray stuff, like the wolf gray stuff that's around right now is, is fairly decent too at night, but I really just lean a lot on mass gray being a, a pretty good uh, option for nighttime stuff. And the reason I came to Multicam and Desert Digital is because we did a camo comparison uh, many years back when I first started ITS. We went down to Big Bend National Park and took a ton of photos. You can, I'll link to the article so you, if your guys are interested in that. Um, at the time, a lot of the new camo patterns were not around. Obviously, this was 2009, so ATAX had just come onto the scene, and that was part of our camo comparison. So you will see that represented in that. But, you know, all the Cryptek-type camos and things like that, the stuff that's out now, wasn't around back then, so hence the reason those weren't included. Obviously, Mass Gray wasn't included either, but we shot them from, you know, dedicated 
uh, distances. Uh, we truly tried to get that camo comparison as scientific as possible. And the multicam and, I'm sorry, the desert digital that we had came out the best in that arid environment. So that was big bend, it was desert, um, and it really shone there. And multicam is just kind of a, um, a personal opinion that I feel like that's a, a great pattern too. It did pretty well in the, in the camel comparison, but I've just really felt that that's blended in really well. And sorry to get long-winded about that, but I wanted to just really talk about camel patterns. So, like I said, this was dipped. Um, and then this is a gun that, this is like my first AR back many, many years ago. Uh, it was a POF, it was one of the first piston-driven ARs that was kind of around. Uh, this is POF USA. So this was just my rattle can job. What I did is I actually cut a stencil from the multicam pattern and used that with the three different colors of paint that I put on this to kind of give it the, the colorway you're kind of seeing um, in this design. So like I said, kind of an older gun. I don't really prefer an ACOG on an AR, but you know, this being a longer 16 inch gun, I felt that you know, it's kind of applicable. But at any rate, what I wanted to do too is eventually come back and I bought one of these templates or uh, whatever you call it from Primary Arms. They make this desert digital type uh, type template, like a spray template you can use for spray paint. So I've been meaning to go back and kind of do that on this gun too. But like I said, what I wanted to do is have something that's hot swappable, and that's the, kind of the goal of that 14 and a half. So. One thing, one other thing I did want to mention, uh, other than kind of walking through the accessories that I did paint, is that this is, even though the cap looks fairly flat, um, there is some gloss to this paint, and that's why I had to come back and kind of hit it with some matte clear coat. And this is, this is actually what the matte clear coat looks like on it. It's still got a tiny bit of shine, but nowhere near what it did uh, before I hit it with the matte. So I would highly recommend that too if you're thinking about painting anything with that. So I have a, um, a holster and magazine combo from Armadillo Concealment that was painted here with that colorway. Um, again, everything that you see here I kind of have in, uh, in another set to do, to do mass gray around. Um, this is a AXTS charging handle that's got a gray, uh, I guess, accent color that I felt like was even already a close match that probably didn't need any paint. And then. I'm still kind of going back and forth with what I want to put on the inside of these grips. I've got a Magpul grip on every one of my ARs uh, because I like the option of being able to carry a, a spare bolt and firing pin in my guns. And I have the option, you know, obviously to take this out and put it into each gun, but I'd like to have one dedicated in the spare bolt that's dedicated to each gun that's always there. Uh, but I have been kind of toying around with the idea of this newer insert from Magpul for lube and I've always just kind of carried around one of these slip 2000 EWLs just this little single one ounce serving of these but I like the, the smaller nature of this too so I'm still kind of battling that anyhow hopefully that's uh, <laughs> probably way more info than you needed to know or wanted to know about masquerade and things like that but uh, let me know if you got any questions on that Hey guys, welcome to Questions Over Coffee. The first question I have is from Blake on Facebook who wanted to know, storage rack behind you is in a lot of your gear tasting videos. I know what it is and where to get it. I just can't find the pieces you hang your clothes and carriers from. So for those of you that don't know, that might be, don't remember the other video, I picked these racks up from Lowe's. This was a while back. I think they still have them. I want to say somebody said in the comments that maybe Home Depot had them and not Lowe's now. I can't remember, but Anyway, that's where these racks came from. And the way that these plates and belts and all that stuff is hung off these is they have wire racks. So I literally just, you know, hook the, the hangers into those slots on the wire rack. So it's really nothing more than even that. So the, uh, the shelving all comes with it. I think it's each one of these came with the, the four shelves. So I've got one at the very bottom, which you can't see. Then I have some uh, 
kit bags that organize a bunch of stuff on the bottom of this shelf, and then I've got another level, and then this stuff that you, that you see there. So I think there's some pictures probably of the whole deal somewhere uh, from a while back. So that's where it came from. Dudley from email asks, in the wake of all the tragedies happening around the world, is there a recommendation on alerts or tweets to follow real time? First of all, Twitter is a great resource for news. I feel like that can be some of the most timely and up-to-date news because they don't, they don't filter the news feed like Facebook does. So Facebook's got their algorithm to where now you don't see certain stuff unless the businesses pay for it or uh, sometimes they'll restrict even your friends to specific people that are more related to you or I, they screw things up all the time with that news feed. So um, whatever, that's their prerogative. But at the same time, it can make seeing timely stuff not as uh, likely than Twitter, which doesn't restrict that kind of stuff. But um, so we we've prefer a, like the BBC app, which I feel personally that BBC can sometimes be a more unbiased news source than many of the local U.S. news sources anyway. And I tend to lean more towards BBC to get news from America, which I know sounds completely strange. It's the British Broadcasting Corporation, I think is what BBC stands for. So it wouldn't, you wouldn't think that that would be a great place for American news, but it really is. So with that app, you can, uh, you can actually push updates, you know, with the push notifications to like your iPhone or whatever for like the world news, you can get that updated. So you might see that stuff come through. Can it get a little unwieldy? I'm sure, but at the same time, at least you're catching what might be pertinent if that's truly what your focus is and what you want to know. So hopefully that helps. All right, guys, in case you're wondering, still enjoying ground sport blend here on gear tasting as well as ITS headquarters, which we brew the same coffee at headquarters that I drink on the show, in case you're wondering. So thanks for watching. As always, use the pound tag gear tasting, which I might be a little hard to read in the video, but that's what it says right here in the coffee mug. On any of the social media networks, we will get your questions answered here on Gear Tasting. And as always, if you're enjoying what we're doing here on Gear Tasting, please consider joining as a crew leader at ITS. We've got some information below on how to join. It's 50 bucks a year, and that's a great way to help support the content on what we're doing here on Gear Tasting. If you're enjoying it and you're getting value from it, uh, we would very much appreciate it. Uh, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel if you're not and you're enjoying gear tasting as well. Uh, we do this show every week on Thursdays and we do a not every week on Tuesdays. So thanks for watching.